Good morning. My name is Gary Glassman. Welcome to Unity of San Antonio Online. Unity is a positive path for spiritual living. We offer spiritual teachings that provide practical tools for meaningful and abundant living. We are inclusive and open-minded. Our philosophy is more spiritual than religious and is based in love. We honor all paths to God. We believe in making a positive difference in the world. As divine love, we envision a spiritually transformed, peaceful world. We dance in the truth of who we are through meditation, study, and service. Go to our website unityofessay.org to learn about all of our current opportunities for classes, meditation, and projects we are engaged in to serve the greater San Antonio area. For updates directly in your email, click the envelope icon on our website to sign up for our e-newsletter. And thanks for visiting unityofessay.org. Love is leading me on, love is leading me on, troubles fade and my heart is strong, love is leading me on, love is leading me on, love is leading me on, troubles fade.
At Unity of San Antonio, we honor the inherent wholeness and wisdom within people of all ages. We are a community inclusive of young people who have a special place in our hearts. Your youth and family ministry are currently homeschooling. This is a blessing for them and for all young people in the world. Together, children and teens, we know who you are. You are the light of God. We love you, we bless you, we celebrate you, and we see you doing great things. Hi, I'm Tim Torres, um, and they asked me to say some words about unity and about intentional giving and what unity means to me. And, you know, I had this thought when I was about to start doing this about the insurance commercial. You know the one. They're doing a Zoom meeting with all the employees of the insurance company, and one of them is asked to role play a scene where he's trying to sell insurance to another and she's being very resistant and he's getting nowhere. And finally he says, this isn't realistic. They say, look, we're not buying it. You're not trying hard enough. So he launches into a little rap and uh, everybody commercial kind of ends there with everybody telling him, don't do that. Don't do that. That's, that's not going to work. So that's where my thoughts went. You know, I'm not going to launch into a rap today. Um, but I thought about, doing it just for the sake of making fun of another commercial, which is what I hope this doesn't feel like because that's not my intention. Unity is home for me, and it's been home since 1992. Uh, I came to this Unity Church in 2013, but before that I had been part of or connected with in some way about five or six others over the years. And so if any, if you're anything like me, the first time you came to a unity service, you had this feeling that you were coming home. And maybe even sometimes you come to a unity service and felt so relieved to be among like-minded people and to not be judged for some aspect of yourself and to be able to be who you are and still find out that um, there's love in this universe for you as there is for me, I mean, maybe even cried about it. So that's what unity is to me. The very, the very word unity means we're coming together as one. And the force in the universe that makes that happen, we call it love. We call it God. God is love. So whether you want to believe whatever you want to believe about what God really is, or, you know, what does God look like, or how does God act? If you want to, you know, we don't get into that stuff here because here's what we know. God is love. Love is who we are. Um, we are divine down in ourselves. And when you hear that message in a unity church, if, if it doesn't make you cry, it makes you want to cry. So I'm glad to be here connected with all of you. And that's also the reason why we need to support this movement. We need to support this church because it was here when we walked in the door and it needs to be here when someone else walks in the door. And that's really what it comes down to. These, these things that we're doing um, require work. And so when I say support, yeah, I mean financially support, but I also mean get out of your seats and do something that the church needs done or that the movement needs done and do it in a loving, giving way that's not feeling like you have to do it because you don't have to do it. The church will survive without your work. The church will survive without your money. But the whole purpose of being here is so that you have the opportunity to transform your life by doing the things that you feel committed to do and convicted to do. And so that's all I want to say. Um, have a great year and it's Thanksgiving coming up. Have a happy Thanksgiving and a wonderful holiday season, and uh, thanks for being part of this. So this morning we want to begin our time of prayer and meditation by sharing a reading from the Daily Word. 
The word for today is forgive. The affirmation is I forgive as I grow in love and compassion. As a part of its growth, the locust sheds its old skin, releasing it to enter a new phase of life. In the same way, some of our old beliefs may limit us like a skin grown too tight. For instance, if we believe others have kept us from God's good, it may be time to release those old beliefs and forgive. In forgiving, the Spirit of God fills us with unconditional love and it enables us to let go of thoughts of anger or hurt which no longer serve us. And it reminds us that God loves, protects, and provides for our every need. And that nothing can change this eternal love. So in that awareness, we can accept the grace of forgiveness and forgive ourselves and forgive all others. And as we do so, we grow in love and compassion and we move forward on our spiritual journey. This message was inspired by the scripture from the book of Matthew, the ninth chapter and the 17th verse. Neither is new wine put into old wine skins, but new wine is put into fresh wine skins. And so both are preserved. So as we enter into this time now of quietness and this time of prayer and this time of meditation, I invite you to get comfortable in your seat, to take a deep, cleansing, relaxing breath, to begin consciously to shut out the external world and all external distractions. And just allow yourself to be fully present to this now moment. As we are mindful today of the tragedy in Colorado and the tragedies that take place in our world on a daily basis, we are also mindful that there is a a greater spirit than the individual human self. That spirit we call God. And that spirit enables us to move to a deeper level of understanding and a deeper level of knowledge. That spirit provides us with the wisdom a wisdom that in turn guides us through each one of life's experiences with renewed faith and renewed energy and renewed health and renewed vitality We hold that truth not just in our own hearts, but in the care and the keeping of others. Knowing that they too have access to this tremendous power.
So again, as we enter into this time of quietness, I want to invite you to take another deep breath. And to release it, and in releasing it, let go of any concerns, or any worries, or any fears, or any doubts, or any anxieties. And for the next few moments, just be still. Be still and to know that presence that is within and all around you. We give thanks for this time, quiet communion. It's time of deeper awareness of who we are and what we are on the planet for. It's time of a deeper awareness of this incredible gift of life. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I am definitely looking forward to everyone coming out for our food drive next Saturday, so please stop by and say hi. Both Mary and I will be available to wave at you as you drop off your donations and continue around, so it'll be good to see everyone. Please stop in. This morning's message is called Compassionate Curiosity. And the single most important element of, I believe, the human spirit is its dogged ability to face the uncertainty of the future with curiosity and optimism. However, their greatest enemy is fear. And it's not just the type of fear that breeds caution, but the kind of fear that's, that's based on misinformation and based on superstition. You know, as long as we've been on this planet, our sciences have all primarily based themselves on curiosity. And I think that's one of the reasons that Dr. Ernest Holmes concept of the science of mind was so popular back in its day because people wanted to get away from the superstition of religion. And his concept of the science of mind resonated so well with so many people that I think it struck a chord with our natural instincts to be curious about everything. But most importantly, curious about life. 
So again, this morning, I'm going to talk about tempering that natural tendency towards curiosity with a little bit of wisdom and perhaps an ample amount of compassion. And I mention compassion because our natural tendency as human beings is to be hard on ourselves. Our tendency is to judge ourselves and uh, judge our behaviors and judge them rather harshly. And we also have that human tendency to be overtly perfectionistic in our expectations of ourselves and sometimes of others as well. So compassionate curiosity helps us sort of sift through all the muck, if you will, without getting stuck in it or attached to it. About four years ago, I read an interesting book titled, What's in the Way is the Way. And this book is by Mary O'Malley. And in the book, she puts forth the idea, or I would even go so far as to call it, she puts forth the reality that all of humanity gets stuck in their own personal beliefs quite frequently in their lives, and that they're, they get so stuck that they come to a point of believing that there is just one way to live and that that personal way is the only way, and that there should never be any deviations from that way, no spontaneity in their lives, no, no just getting up and living. And this concept of just sticking with this one laned way, one way living, even if it it impedes your progress, can lead to devastating negative results, even creating more interesting challenges for us to have to overcome. Now, logically, everyone knows that flexibility is a good thing. For years now, I've heard New Ages talk about going with the flow and about trusting the divine presence. I've often done it myself. But let just one obstacle appear and all of our teachings, all the affirmations, all the truth we know intellectually flies out the window. Everyone I know has done this at one point or another in their lives. And as I said, I know I have. And when I have, it's generally because I think that there is the right way and the wrong way, or I think that there is a good way or a not so good way, or even when I think that's a bad way to do things. The truth is, the way is the way our instincts lead us. And if we allow ourselves to become more curious about all the propositions in our lives, we will do ourselves a great favor. It will help us strengthen our faith. It will help us become more determined. It will help us not be so fearful of failing. Let me tell you a short story about the way. I think it was the year 1980, and I always have to preface my stories with I think, because if my wife is listening, she will always give me the correct details, so I don't want to have to go back and get them from her. So I preface everything I say with I think. What? this story is about is a time in my life that I had decided that I wanted to enter Unity's ministerial training program. And I'm going to try to give you the short version. 
At this point in time, I had two children that were in middle school. I had a small mountain of debt, and the decision to enter ministerial training was going to require me moving out of the state, and not just moving out of the state, but moving my family out of the state as well. And then more importantly, it involved me having to sell a house which we'd been in for less than a year. And so we finally came to the decision that I would do this. And I went out and I engaged a personal friend of mine who was a realtor to sell the house. So as he and I were talking about the contract, I said to him, Frank, I need to make at least $15,000 profit on this house. And he said, hold, hold on here a minute, Jimmy. He said, the only thing I'm willing to promise you is that I'll get you the very best price that I can get out of the house, but I'm not making any kind of guarantees. So we argued and hemmed and hawed about that for quite some time, and we finally came to the agreement that he was right. We put the house on the market. It sat on the market about six weeks in what was a pretty hot market at the time. And I started to feel the pressure of it not selling. And I kept thinking to myself, we've got to get this thing done. So I called Frank and I said, Frank, we need to get this house sold. I'm running out of time. I'm ranting and raving at him over the phone. He listened to me patiently. And when I finally finished, he said to me simply and patiently, Jimmy, he said, let me tell you something. There's your way and there's my way and there's God's way. And he hung up the phone on me. And I hemmed and stewed and hawed about that for a few days, but I didn't say anything. And I turned it completely over to him. A few weeks later, the house sold. Sold at a $13,000 profit. I was able to pay off a good portion, if not most, of my debt. And then I started my life all over again. And from that point to this day, I've started my life over again and again and again and again. And that process is actually happening for me every day in my life. I've come to the understanding that every day is a new beginning. And along with that, I have had to surrender the belief that I'm in control of anything. So compassionate curiosity for me alleviates the need to feel that illusionary feeling of being in control of anything. Compassionate curiosity, in Mary O'Malley's words, and it takes me out of my mind's reactionary behavior. And it encourages me to imagine the possibility of a better outcome. And believe you me, when you're in the midst of a pandemic or you're in the midst of making tremendous and huge changes in your life, when you can consider the possibility of a better outcome, it certainly helps to make the journey a little easier. I want to go back to the title of Mary O'Malley's book, What's in the Way is the Way. That can work in either direction. It's kind of tricky because sometimes the obstacles in our lives can actually be a pathway to something greater. 
And then there are other times that the obstacles have to be completely eliminated before we can move forward. But even in elimination, they are still an integral part of the way forward for us. Now, logically, this is about as clear as mud. But in spirit, it speaks to how complex life can get. The more I study this thing called life, the more I am convinced that our souls actually choose the way for us and that we as individuals get to work with the different variables that pop up in that way. And one of the most important variables is what O'Malley calls flow. We've all heard of or used that term, going with the flow. But how often do we seriously give it the importance that it truly deserves. I mean, if we look around us, we see evidence of it everywhere. The rivers flowing from the mountains to the sea, clouds flowing across the sky, the winds dancing through the trees, time flows despite our efforts to slow it down. Blood flows throughout the body temple Sound flows all around us. And so in one way or another, we have to get caught up in the flow. So why not do it compassionately? Why not do it without suffering? Suffering is truly obstacle. And it can also be avoided entirely. So this simple little talk this morning about compassionate curiosity is really about eliminating those moments of suffering that crop up in your life. The Apostle Paul summed it up quite nicely in the first book to the Corinthians. He said the average person does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, and they do not receive it because they must be spiritually discerned. And then he went on to say, I, Paul, the minister, have planted the seeds in your consciousness, and my fellow minister, Apollos, has watered the seed. And then he closed it with this. He says, the rest is up to you. The rest is up to you. So this week, if you're going to and fro in your life and you get caught up in your head and you can't seem to make sense of what's going on around you, Just stop for a few minutes and think about the flow. And then release your fear, release your suffering, release your concerns, release your beliefs, and just let it flow. And as you allow it to flow, just see what happens. Have a great week, friends. Thanks for tuning in. God bless. As you might expect, your giving is especially important during this time. We invite you to participate in the flow of abundant living through your generosity to our spiritual community by contributing. Please go to unityofsa.org and click the green donate area to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Unity Church of San Antonio 8103 Broadway Street, San Antonio, Texas, 78209, and it's Suite 210. 
our prosperity blessing together, divine love as our community blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we are, all we give, and all we receive. Amen. Stay tuned for some special music from our wonderful Unity of Music, Unity of San Antonio music team. This chant by Karen Drucker was inspired by Reverend Mark Vieta of the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Mark gave a talk about how he faced the impending death of a loved one by starting each day saying, I am so blessed. And he continued saying it over and over during the course of this very difficult time. Karen Drucker was so inspired by his talk that she wrote this chant that she could sing every day as part of a spiritual practice. I have learned that taking time to give thanks for all that I have has made such a difference in my life, especially in those darker times when I can't feel it or see it. As Meister Eckert said, if the only prayer you say in the whole in your whole life is thank you, that would be that would suffice. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed, 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 I am so grateful for all that I have, I am so In closing our service today, we'll share our community blessing and prayer for protection, followed by the peace song. Please feel free to join us at home. Beloved friends, I see your divine light. I see your open heart. I see your life transforming. I celebrate your divine identity as you radiate your life in the world. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Amen. I'd like to wish you all a very safe and joyous holiday season.